How's it going, people? Got some leftover beers from camping. Bohemium. This is actually quite nice. Well, I didn't end up reading my gold book in the woods like I'd planned, but at least I'm breaking in my new book. You saw the paint job, I assume. All right, it's got the same illustrations. It's just basically the same book as the last one, just less mileage. And we got some interesting pictures that they claim are proof of that all those Mormon stories are somehow have uh, history behind them. Yeah, they're claiming this is a picture of a horse, although it looks more like a deer. There's a, a deer toy. It's a deer, and it's got wheels on it, so they had chariots, they say. And they claim this is a picture of a horse. Because it's a big problem. They say there were horses in North America before Columbus. Bunch of Aztec shit. And a picture of a mastodon because they also fucked up and said there were elephants here. Alright. So, chapter 47. Let's read that masthead. Uh, Amalekiah, by treachery, becomes king of the Lamanites. His awful wickedness. And that's all they got to say about that. Must be pretty heavy stuff. All right, one. Now, we will return to our record of Amalekiah and those who had fled with him into the wilderness. For behold, he had taken those who went with him and went up in the land of Nephi among the Lamanites and did stir up the Lamanites to anger against the people of Nephi, insomuch that the king of the Lamanites sent a proclamation throughout all his land among all his people that they should gather themselves together again to go to battle against the Nephites. Two, and it came to pass that when the proclamation had gone forth among them, they were exceedingly afraid. Yea, they feared to displease the king, and they also feared to go to battle against the Nephites, lest they should lose their lives. And it came to pass, in the same verse, that they would not, or the more part of them would not, obey the commandments of the king. Three. And now, it came to pass. That the king was wroth because of their disobedience. Therefore, he gave Amalekiah the command of that part of his army, which was obedient unto his commands, and commanded him that he should go forth and compel them to arms. For, now behold, this was the desire of Amalekiah, for he being a very subtle man to do evil, therefore he laid the plan in his heart to dethrone the king of the Lamanites. Five. And now he had got the command of those parts of the Lamanites who were in favor of the king, and he sought to gain favor of those who were not obedient. Therefore he went forward to the place which was called 
Oneida, for thither had all the Lamanites fled. For they discovered the army coming, and supposing that they were coming to destroy them, therefore they fled to Oneida, to the place of arms. 6. And they had appointed a man to be a king and a leader over them, being fixed in their minds with a determined resolution that they would not be subjected to go against the Nephites. 7. And it came to pass... that they had gathered themselves together upon the top of the mount which was called Antiopus, Antipas, in preparation to battle. 8. And it was not Amalekiah's uh, intention to give them battle according to the commandments of the king, but behold, it was his intention to give favor with the armies of the Lamanites, that he might place himself at their head and dethrone the king and take possession of the kingdom. 9. And behold, it came to pass that he caused his army to pitch their tents in the valley which was near Mount Antipas. Ten. And it came to pass Ten. And it came to pass that when it was night he sent a secret embassy into the Mount Antipas, desiring that the leader of those who were upon the mount, whose name was Lehoni, uh, Le Lehontai, that he should come down to the foot of the mount, for he desired to speak with him. My buddy, uh, he's got a YouTube channel, B3 Boy, all one word. That's the music I'm playing. Oh, shit. <laughs> Verse 11 is, like, really thirsty. All right. <laughs> 11. And it came to pass. that when Lehontai received the message, he durst not go to the foot of the mount. It came to pass that Amalekiah sent again the second time, <clears throat> desiring him to come down. And it came to pass all in verse 11. <sighs> that Lehontai would not, and he sent again the third time. Get that a magic number. At least most of the time. Twelve. And it came to pass. That when Amalekai found that he could not get Lehontai to come down off from the mount, he went up into the mount. Third time's a charm. Nearly to Lehontai's camp. And he sent again the fourth time this his message unto Lehontai 
desiring that he would come down, that he would bring his guards with him, so he could feel nice and safe. Thirteen. And it came to pass. Uh, that, that when Lehontai had come down with his guards to Amalekiah, that Amalekiah desired him to come down with his army in the night time and surround those men in their camps. You crafty bastard. Over whom the king had given him command. So he's fucking over the loyal boys. And that he would deliver them up into Lehontai's hands if he would make him, Amalekiah, a second leader over the whole army. <coughs> Fourteen. And it came to pass. that Lehontai came down with his men and surrounded the men of Amalekiah so that before they awoke at dawn of day they were surrounded by the armies of Lehontai. Fifteen. And it came to pass. That when they saw that they were surrounded, they pled, like, as in pleaded, but they pled, with Amalekiah that he would suffer them to fall in with their brethren, that they might not be destroyed. <clears throat> now this was the very thing which Amalekiah desired. Rimshot. It's a thirsty chapter, folks. <coughs> Heart. They pled. <laughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. And it came to pass. That he delivered his men. Contrary to the commands of the king. Now... This was the thing that Amalekiah desired, that he might accomplish his designs in dethroning the king, which is almost a reiteration of uh, verse 15. We get it, he's crafty. That's, that's finally something cool is happening in this, this book. <sighs> 17. Now, it was the custom among the Lamanites, if their chief leader was killed, to appoint the second leader to be their chief leader. Eighteen. And it came to pass. That Amalekiah caused that one of his servants should administer, administer poison by degrees to Lee Hone die that he died. Ah, oh, that was mean. Right out of the Old Testament. 19. Now, when Lee Hone Tai was dead, the Lamanites appointed Amalekiah to be their leader and their chief commander. 20. 
and it came to Paris. That Amalekiah marched with his armies, for he had gained his desires. That's in parentheses. That part. Uh, to the land of Nephi, to the city of Nephi, which was the chief city. 21. And the king came out to meet him with his guards, for he supposed that Amalickiah had fulfilled his commands, and that Amalickiah had gathered together so great an army to go against the Nephites to battle. 22. But behold, as the king came out to meet him, Amalickiah caused that his servants should go forth to meet the king. And they went and bowed themselves before the king, as if to uh, reverence him because of his greatness. 23. And it came to pass. And it came to pass that the king put forth his hand to raise them his hands. Or to get the guys to stand up. That's what it is. He's raising them. You may stand. Okay, get it. Uh, as was the custom with the Lamanites, as a token of peace, which custom they had taken from the Nephites. It is plagiarist. I'm not like this book. This book isn't a plagiarism at all. It's real. People believe in this shit. 24. And it came to pass. That when he had raised the first from the ground, behold, he stabbed the king to the heart, and he fell to the earth. Finally, something happens. Out of Shakespeare. 25. Now the servants of the king fled, and the servants of Amalickiah raised a cry, saying, 26. Behold, the servants of the king have stabbed him to the heart, and he has fallen, and they have fled. Behold, come and see. 27. And it came to pass. And Amalickiah commanded that his armies should march forth and see what had happened to the king. And when they had come to the spot and found the king lying in his gore, Amalickiah pretended to be wrong. And said, Whosoever loved the king, let him go forth and pursue, and pursue his servants, that they might be slain. This guy's starting to remind me of King David just a little bit. God damn. Technical difficulties. Operator error.
they who love the king, when they heard these words, came forth and pursued after the servants of the king. 29. Now, when the servants of the king saw an army pursuing after them, they were frightened again and fled into the wilderness and came over into the land of Zarahemla and joined the people of Ammon. We're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> Protect us! 30. And the army which pursued after them returned, having pursued after them in vain, and thus Amalekiah, by his fraud, gained the hearts of the people. 31. And it came to pass. On the morrow, he entered the city of, ne city of Nephi with his armies and took possession of the city. And now it came to pass. Uh, 32. And now it came to pass that the queen, when she had heard that the king was slain for Amalekiah, had sent an embassy to the queen informing her that the king had been slain by his servants. You know, the, the loyal the loyal guys. <laughs> the good guys. The dupes. <clears throat> that he had pursued them with his army, but it was in vain, and they had made their escape. 33. Therefore, when the queen had received this message, this message, she sent unto Amalekiah, desiring him that he would spare the people of the city. And she also desired him that he should come in unto her. And she also desired him that he should bring witnesses with him to testify concerning the death of the king. 34. And it came to pass. Damn. I don't know if I have any more room to put this. Uh. And it came to pass that Amalekiah took the same servant that slew the king and all them who were with him and went in unto the queen unto the place where she sat. And they all testified unto her that the king was slain by his own servants. So you gotta believe them. I mean, they said so. And they said also, they have fled. Does not this testify against them? And thus they satisfied the queen concerning the death of the king. 35. And it came to pass. Oh. That Amalekiah sought the favor of the queen and took her unto him to wife. And thus, by his fraud, and by the assistance of his cunning servants, he obtained the kingdom. Yay! That's what it says. He was acknowledged king 
throughout all the land among all the people of the Lamanites who were composed of the Lamanites and the Lemuelites and the Ishmaelites and all of the dissenters of the Nevites. <coughs> the chosen ones. From the reign of Nephi down to the present time. 36. Now, these dissenters, having the same instructions and the same information of the Nephites, yea, having been instructed in the same knowledge of the Lord, nevertheless, it is strange to relate, not long after their dissensions, they became more hardened and and impen impenitent. They weren't going to, you know, grovel. Uh, and more wild, wicked, and ferocious than the Lamanites. Drinking in with the traditions of the Lamanites, giving way to indolence and all manner of lasciviousness, Yay! Entirely, entirely forgetting the Lord their God. And that's at the end of chapter 47. And that's the end of me for tonight. Anyway, sorry I didn't get to read this in the woods. Maybe it's just, maybe it's for the best. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you guys in the next story chapter. Oh, this, this one actually had a little bit of It was a little bit interesting. Peace. The